This week on Shakedown, a recap of my visit to Mossport. But first, the Royal Purple Different is Best Racer of the Week. And this week, it's Corvette Racing, who in the America Le Mans series at Mossport finally beat those goddamn rule bending, got so many technical exemptions they might as well be cheating, says their competition, BMWs, who won all three of the first GT races in 2011. Did I just name call BMW after they gave me an M3 to drive to Lime Rock this year for simply doing a show about them last year when I worked for Corvette for two years and I never even got offered a ride in a vet, let alone drive one? I digress. Corvette at Mossport got the job done and broke the BMW win streak. And for that, Corvette Racing is this week's difference maker. But really, Corvette, two years with you and never one offer to drive a C6, Z06, or ZR1? But then again, I'm not the Corvette demographic. You know, the successful plumber from Long Island with a beer belly, the fashion sense of a Vegas pit boss, and finally the cash to afford his dream vet. Chrome wheels, of course. Yeah, that's me. The next generation of performance is here. Royal Purple's new high-performance street motor oil, HBS. Fortified with zinc phosphorus anti-wear protection, HBS exceeds the demands of high-performance and modified engines. Magnified, HBS improves metal surfaces for longer engine life. HBS's high film strength frees up more power, reduces heat and wear, plus provides greater protection. The next generation of performance is here with HBS from Royal Purple, the performance oil that outperforms. I had to go to last weekend's Mossport ALMS race for business. On behalf of the series, a manufacturer, and a racing team, JDX Racing, the gold Porsche GTC car. Four days in the paddock, pits, and in meetings. So on this shakedown, I thought I'd try to share with you some behind the scenes tidbits, at least what I saw. So let's see if this works. I arrived at Toronto airport and immediately knew Canadians are race fans, because too many of them were looking at me, trying to figure out which driver I was. Reminding me of my favorite joke. <laughs> How do you know our auto race is in town? Finally, the short guys are getting laid. At Mossport, you quickly realize the star of the event is the track. Fast, big elevation changes resulting in many blind corners that are mostly fourth and fifth gear quick, making Mossport the ball check track of North America. Sorry to put it that way, girls. That's what James Hunt said. <laughs> well, Mention turns to and four to anyone that's driven Mossport and watched their eyes narrow. Track talk usually starts with a big exhale. Watching turn two, the cars come over the hill and turn into a downhill double apex. There's a bump right after apex one that was really bouncing the Corvettes. You feed the gas, hit apex two, track out and head up to the next hill to turn three. Okay, it's fast, but it seems pretty straightforward. Well, until I walked up the track and looked into turn two as the driver sees it entering in fifth gear. You can't see anything. No apex one, no reference points, no track. Oh, the treetops look nice, and when I f up this corner, I'll probably land the car there, but holy shit. And this is turn two. I got eight more of these little monsters to go. Okay, that's the track. How about the teams? I don't know the LMP guys, Aston Martin or Dyson Mazda. So all I do is observe that the Aston is mega fast, the team business-like, versus Dyson dysfunction. Their car always having a problem and a pit lane crew chief crew guy shouting match over how and when to pull the air jack hose, hosers, which still wasn't as colorful as overhearing the crew guy for the Panos Abruzzi after the driver crashed the car on race morning warm up. His quote, this driver's a dick. There's a time to push and a time not. When the f is he gonna learn what warm up is for? It was great. In GT, my ears were bleeding from all the whining. ALMS had a rule change for Mossport to slow the BMWs, but something got done wrong and the cars raced as is, and that lit the fuse on all the real feelings from Porsche, Corvette, Ferrari, Ford GT, and Jag. But even BMW was pissed. They felt this slowdown rule was unfair to them as the speed of all the cars has been close all year. Yeah, maybe on paper, but everyone noticed that the pole winning BMW set its time on lap two, then parked while everyone else had to push real hard through 9, 10, 11 laps just to get close. LMPC deserves no talk. These guys cannot drive. They produce more hits than Dr. Dre. And I feel for the GTC drivers. They have to watch the mirror so much they might as well race their cars in reverse so they can use the windshield just a little bit. And still the other classes bitch them out and bump them up. ALMS leader Don Panos, he came up to me, shook my hand. He talked about a meeting with the ACO. Sounds like Panos is ready to drift ALMS rules just a little bit from the ACO for the good of ALMS racing. 
<laughs> then he asked me if Ed was with me, and I realized he doesn't know me. He thinks I'm someone else. So of course I said to Don, no, Ed's not here today. He's back at the hotel, snorting blow off the stomach of one of the Falcon Tire Girls. You know, he's really losing it. <laughs> Next year, talk is already in the paddock. Ferrari will stay in LMS, but like Porsche, they will also sell cars in Grand Am. Witness this 458 testing at Daytona. It is not a GT3 spec, but GT3 derived. Point is, based on my Panos talk and with others in the know, it seems no GT3 specs in America in 2012. Neither ALMS nor Grand Am. But if you can tweak your GT3 car like Ferrari did, Grand Am will be your home. Oh, and after all the big analysis Mazda said they were doing to plan their racing future, word is they'll just continue with the RX-8 in 2012. <laughs> eh. So where do you watch GT3? Well, this weekend at the Spa 24. It's only GT3 cars this year. Plus, it's the debut of the McLaren MP. Who cares what numbers they're calling it? Because it's beautiful, purposeful, and ready to mash pedals with the competition. And then there's the World Time Attack Challenge coming next week, August 5 and 6, that a few of you viewers are telling me to watch. Those cars are wild too. But for now, you watch this mashup of both, and we'll cover the results in the next shakedown. The Yokohama, Michelin, and Dunlop tire guys said Mossport turns two and four put some of the highest vertical loads on tires in the LMS. Although Laguna turned 10 and the Road Atlanta front straight turns are close. I'm starting to wonder though whether it's the technology or religion that keeps the cars on track. Oh God, please, stick, stick, stick. Ow, we're living in the fast lane.